Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today I want to talk to you guys about the most amazing and authentic UFO footage ever found. Aha! So that's what a real UFO looks like, or is it? Because to me, that looks just like one of thousands of other UFO sightings that I have looked at personally. So I just don't understand why everyone seems to be in such an uproar over this blasé footage. I mean, even Tyler at Secure Team 10 crawled out of the woodwork to speculate on this unremarkable UFO sighting. Hey, what is up guys? Tyler here, back with Secure Team is the Pentagon or the U.S. government's confirmation, as if we didn't already know, of a piece of UFO footage that came out, Navy footage that was captured, of an obvious triangle-shaped object, not one of ours, but it's a flying triangle. Some may call it a TR-3B, which is an experimental test craft that the U.S. government and uh, military were tinkering with back in the uh, 80s, and uh, some have said that that vehicle utilized um, alien anti-gravity technology. <laughs> well, like I said before, I just don't understand why everyone seems to think that this is some huge breakthrough in ufology. We see way better footage every day, so why is it that Elizondo and Corbell's footage is so damn special? Well, to me it isn't special at all, and that's why I've not commented on it until now. But the recent release of footage by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell has me very suspicious. In fact, the Jeremy Corbell footage has some very interesting and suspicious similarities to Lou Elizondo and the TTSA's release of footage. What similarities are those you might be asking? Well, you know I wouldn't say that if I wasn't going to tell you. <laughs> First, the manner of disclosure in both cases was to seek out George Knapp from KLAS Las Vegas to break the story and get it into the mainstream. It was in this position I learned that the phenomena is indeed real. Until he stepped out on stage last now, October alongside to rock star Tom DeLonge and, DeLong DeLong and other former government essence, insiders, most of the world had never heard of Luis Elizondo, which is how he liked it. Elizondo's government career was spent in the shadows, mostly as a Pentagon intelligence officer. I was at the top of my game in my career field, and I left it all to have this conversation with the American public. From there, both Corbell and Elizondo began the talk show circuit at the top and began working their way down. The second red flag with Corbell's footage is the statement released by the Pentagon stating that the footage is authentic. The same process was followed in Elizondo's case, and the admission was misconstrued in the public eye to mean that the footage was of genuine UFOs. But if you actually read the release by the Pentagon, they in no way speculate as to the nature of the object in either of Corbell's or Elizondo's case. Instead, the Department of Defense is merely commenting that the footage was indeed shot by a member of the U.S. military. There is no mention of any investigation into these sightings or what the findings were if such an investigation took place. And yet, somehow, in both cases, the mainstream and the masses of people have chosen to interpret this as the Pentagon confirming that UFOs exist, which is simply untrue. The Pentagon only confirmed that the footage was shot by a member of the military. Well, la di da and whoop de doo big deal. Unless you're going to release the radar data, communications records, pilot and tower audio, and any other records you have on the sighting, why even bother? I mean, who cares? How many thousands of pieces of footage are in archives just like this of UFOs that were shot by military personnel? 
And like I said earlier, we see better footage shot every day by civilians, so why is the military footage somehow better? Unless it's backed up with other information that I mentioned earlier, like radar data, and pilot chatter, and actual witness statements. And so, the real question to me should not be, are the UFOs in Jeremy Corbell's footage real? Of course they're real. There's something there. Is it a plane? Is it a UFO? Or is it a lens flare caused by Boca? But that's not the real question. The real question should be, why is the Pentagon backing up Lou Elizondo, George Knapp, and now Jeremy Corbell? I mean, it sure seems that way to me with all the similarities between the two cases. In both cases, you have footage leaked from a military member of UFO sightings. In both cases, George Knapp is the go-to guy to inject the story into the mainstream. And in both cases, the Pentagon was somehow forced or chose to authenticate the footage. I strongly suspect that it was that they chose to admit it because the idea of a lone wolf reporter strong arming the Pentagon is laughable at best and it's ludicrous at worst. <laughs> I mean, they could claim national security or even just destroy records flat out. There are so many scenarios in which the DOD is capable of handling this and making it go away that don't require them admitting that the footage is authentic. So I can only believe that they wanted to back up Corbell and Elizondo's story in some distant manner. Why they would want to back them up? I have no idea. I can only speculate. I mean, it could be a psyop to misinform the Russians or the Chinese. <laughs> I don't know, but that sounds like a crock of bull to me. It might even be a psyop to target the American, European, and Australian citizens in order to push a potential threat narrative onto the UFO phenomenon, perhaps to justify some expenditures. Who knows? Or maybe it's just a sad former government employee overvaluing his role in a minor position in order to get credit, notoriety, fame, or fortune. Who really knows what Lou's motivation is? Maybe it's ego, maybe it's financial, or maybe he's still on the job even. I truly have no idea, but I'll tell you what, I don't trust Lou Elizondo. That's just my opinion based on the considerable research that I've done into him over the last few years and the many hours of footage that I've watched and listened to of him speaking. What do you all think? Is Elizondo on the level and am I just being overly suspicious? Is Jeremy Corbell's release of the so-called Triangle UFO legitimate? Or are they all in cahoots? <laughs> Let me know in the comments section down below and while you're down there, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Why not? I want to leave you guys with one final thought. I just would like to point out to you why I put the links for my research and my sightings in the description sections for my videos and why I'm constantly asking what you guys think and telling you to use the links in the videos to go out and research these subjects for yourselves and to make up your own minds. This is important. Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone really has. Use that freedom. Make up your own mind. I want you to ask yourself this question. What do Jeremy Corbell, Baker Mayfield, Tom DeLong, and Secure Team 10 all have in common? What is the one trait that all of these people and many more share? Well, here's my opinion. All of these people have a following, some of them in the millions, and all of them would be extremely easy to mislead. Each and every one of them has made it known to the public that they would do just about anything if somebody even remotely official were to just dangle a little bit of UFO footage in front of them. Tom DeLong began pandering the government years ago as was witnessed in the leaked Podesta emails, just begging to be let in on some kind of top secret UFO program. Jeremy Corbell has been very vocal and prominent in ufology after riding into the scene on Bob Lazar's coattails in his Area 51 <clears throat> documentary, which is a testament to hubris. Baker Mayfield posted a tweet on March 3rd, 2021, telling the world that he saw a UFO. And I think Secure Team 10 would pander just about any story as long as he could sell it as being sourced from an official that he could not name. I mean, the guy's been faking witnesses for years and claiming that he can't divulge information about them. It might be nice to have a legitimate witness whose identity you're trying to protect for once. <laughs> Anyhow, at the end of the day, if anyone from our own military, say some kind of deep state faction or some kind of outside foreign state agent wanted to manipulate any of these people, 
all that they would have to do is dangle a little bit of crappy UFO footage in front of them, and they would fall for it in a heartbeat and entirely because of their own personal desires, either for ego, profit, or just because they want to believe. And why are these folks all so dangerous? Because of the following that they have. There is nothing more dangerous than a rube with a following. They make an easy mark for manipulators. You know, trained liars. You know, like military intelligence folks. You know, like spies. You know, like Lou Elizondo. <laughs> Agents of misinformation will always go after these rubes to get them to add credibility to their agenda. It's a cheap and easy way to buy your way into a culture or community. It's a time-tested tactic that special agents like Elizondo have employed all around the world for years. And that right there is why I will always, with 1,000 subscribers or 1 million, I will always tell you what I think and then I will ask you to make up your own mind and tell me what you think. Figuring things out for yourself is the only freedom anyone really has. Use that freedom. Make up your own mind. I will never try to tell you what you should think, ever. And if I do, call me a f***ing sellout and unsubscribe from my channel, okay? <laughs> and beyond all that, if anyone ever tries to pull some of that shady manipulative garbage on me, I will expose them to the world. So don't even try to come at me with your bullshit agendas. I am not playing and it will blow up in your face. So leave me alone. All right. <laughs> well, guys, that's all I have to say about the recent burp in ufology that I'm calling Corbell. His footage is unimpressive. His attitude is unimpressive. And his beard is unimpressive, at least compared to my own amazing thunder beard. <laughs> beard off, Corbell. Let's do it, dude. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> Alrighty then, until next time guys, take care and be safe out there, and make sure that you always think for yourselves. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503, and I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth. <laughs>